portion will be. And we're going to separate off into neoplastic and osteoporotic lesions. They're clearly different as far as their etiology goes. They're also very different in what the imaging shows and how we should treat these patients. Clearly, osteoporotic patients aren't going to get chemotherapy. Uh, most likely, they're not going to get surgery, and they're clearly not going to get radiation. So you need to have a goal-oriented approach in every patient you see. I clearly think that if you scrutinize your pre-procedural imaging, whether it's MRI or CT, which I clearly think are complementary, you'll understand the underlying etiology much more uh, and be able to treat patients, I think, better. Your approach and angle of your trajectory will, will you'll note that is important in each case and different depending on where the lesion is, superior implant, inferior implant, left, right, or posterior or anterior. And I think as you can clearly see from the picture here, that a Phillips head and a flat head clearly don't interact well, just like certain personalities between you and your spouses. So pearl number one is that directional devices are very valuable. Having different tools in your toolbox clearly help you treat certain diseases easier. I'm someone who doesn't use two needles or two pedicles. I use one pedicle in almost every case. So having different devices to try and get to the superior cleft and inferior bone marrow edema, it's nice to be able to do it through one needle. So having certain curved devices or certain osteotomes is very helpful and takes the stress out of the case. So understanding what's available from each of the um, different companies out there is extremely valuable. This is a case to help make that point clear. You have inferior end plate edema on the MRI, and you have to have a fat suppressed T2 weighted stir imaging to know that. By using an osteotome to go inferiorly helps allow that cement to travel a easier. So unfortunately, I'm not so good at this. My um, trocar went superiorly first, filled it, but since the curved needle the osteotome went in around here, we just pulled this back a little bit and you can see the cement flowing downward. So clearly these um, osteotomes help direct the flow of cement. And it's seen in multiple cases, you'll see in the next two lectures, they'll show you many more cases that help demonstrate these ideas. The second, uh, what I call my pearl is decrease the radiation to yourself. I wear lead glasses, I wear masks and gowns for protection. If you do enough cases, you don't want to fry your hands, or probably the most important thing not to fry is the lens of your eye, because that has a threshold dose to get cataracts. So with this system, actually, the cord is quite long, and staying out of radiation is very important besides using lead shields. I'm not just saying this off the top of my head. There are multiple articles in the literature saying radiation safety is not just for other people. It's for you as well. And you can see here, we're standing quite a distance away from where the image intensifier is, and it's pretty nice to be able to do this with controlled cement delivery in a longer cord to let you stand back, you know, six or 10 feet. It's kind of nice. So another thing to remember. This is a case of someone who had lung cancer. Uh, this is a metastatic disease to C2, patient severe pain. When you put your needle in, you can see that the posterior border under CT guidance of the C2 lesion doesn't have a large space away from the spinal cord. So when you're doing advanced type of procedures, you'd like to have a little more time to work, thicker cement in time to work. So you can see on a sagittal reconstruction, there was no extravasation. This is a case done actually before Define was even invented, and we used a thicker cement, which helped us keep the cement out of the spinal canal so pearl number three is control delivery. You have to understand what devices are out there to know how to do certain cases with a little more um, confidence. And so here you have the defined device that you can actually push a button and you're developing a controlled amount of cement over time. It allows you sometimes to think it through. Did I deliver enough? If you're using one needle on the left side, should I wait a little longer? And you have a lot of working time. So there's advantages to using certain things to making sure you understand you don't have to rush through to get the cement in, cement in like Dr. Daramon did in his first case. He used a fast simplex cement, which was very difficult to deliver quickly because you don't want to have any extravasation. 
So sometimes using thicker cements in a controlled fashion lets you do it a little more easier, like if you're gluing an AVM versus using onyx. Another case of a hemangioma of the thoracic spine in the young lady who was a high-end athlete who had severely limited abilities because of her fracture through the hemangioma seen in both MR and CT. I don't have the MR presented here. I actually didn't believe that was causing all her pain. I gave a little Novocaine along this area and she had complete pain relief after Novocaine. So I agreed to put a needle into it and you can see depositing slower, thicker cement is nice. In addition, my next pearl is there's many companies and many devices that have a tube that goes through the trocar to develop, to um, deliver your cement. That means you're not gonna have the trocar when it comes out having a cement tail along a nerve root or along the duro. And so utilizing the right tools in the right place is only, you're only able to do that once you understand there's a lot of tools out there. So pearl number four is utilizing a tube or a delivery device within the trocar. So you don't get extravasation of these lesions out there. Again, targeting responsible lesions in osteoporosis or neoplastic is somewhat different. And just putting a needle anywhere doesn't always have good results. So I think managing and scrutinizing your images before you go into a study is exceedingly important if you want good outcomes. This is a case of cancer within um, a lumbar vertebral body that caused severe pain. We have MRI showing enhancement of the tumor and sticking a needle in and filling up the lytic portions of this are very easy to do. So you see the needle going in and a cancer lesion that had lytic areas posteriorly. I didn't want to extravasate posteriorly, so we gave a small amount of cement within the vertebral body. In this case, we of course watch our patients um, and she didn't do quite as well on the pain side. And so we look back on a post CT showing not only do we fill it that well, but there's a pedicle fracture. Do we cause this? I don't think so because of two reasons. One is there's sclerosis along the pedicle fracture. In addition, if you look back at a CT scan done pre-procedure, you can see there's no cement here. But the abdominal CT, which we didn't look at that closely, actually showed that there's a pedicle fracture through this area. So we knew that ahead of time, we would have probably filled that and had a better result day one. So we went back in the same vertebral body, put a thicker trocar in with a controlled delivery through the pedicle, and a nice result of doing, uh, crossing the pedicle with some cement. So I think a pearl alone is follow patients closely post-procedure. So you don't just do the procedure and not watch them. They have residual pain, there's a reason. So if you use pearl number five, scrutinize the images ahead of time, you prevent the problem with the residual pain. So pearl number six would be follow your patients very closely after the procedure, and then you go back and you fill up the lesion a little better as well as across the pedicle. This patient did great. The oncologists love us. They sent us quite a few uh, lytic lesions of the spine for treatment. Our radiation oncologist wants to treat when we have a lytic lesion filling up more than half the bone prior to focal um, radiation because they feel it's going to collapse. And we have radiation therapists that came from Pittsburgh who actually have series out there doing the same thing. So lastly, before I let my colleagues go, is pearl number seven. I always think that each patient is an individual. You can't use a trial that wasn't based on your patients. So do you use RFA? Do you destroy tumor? When you use neoplastic ideology, do you put thick cement in? Do you use screws and hardware above and below your cancer? Something, this next case is just for thought. To open up the ideas with the next two practitioners, um, we'll show more in detail. This is a 91-year-old man who couldn't hold still for the MRI, had a CT scan, and it's a really a lytic lesion here. It's, we didn't know if it was cancer or not, 91 no primaries. It was probably just osteoporosis. Couldn't hold still for the MRI. So I started filling it with one side, one needle. I'm always a one needle kind of guy. And it kept filling and filling. So I didn't want to just keep filling on one side, so I went to the other side. And it looks like I use balloons, mega balloons. But what happens to the marrow, I was thinking, when you put all that cement in, you know, where is it going? So just for academic purposes, I followed them up with a CT scan. And I think you can see here that the, next to the um, bone marrow, there's actually bone marrow that went out into the psoas muscle. 
This is not cement, it's not as radio dense as these air. It's just bone marrow that pooped out the sides. And so it's kind of interesting, if that's tumor, did you push tumor out the sides? What, this is normal bone marrow that went out of the vertebral body because we replaced the bone marrow with cement. There's actually other um, literature out there that says that you could normally can see fatty embolism within the lungs. So we know this happens. It's in the literature, it's not surprising. We just don't always look at it. And we know patients with metastatic disease are probably gonna die in a period of time, so we don't always worry about it with cancer. But as our treatments get better, maybe we should realize that what we're pushing out of the spine is important. Should we be using radiofrequency ablation or microwave or cryotherapy prior to placing cement in? It's a question. So before my colleagues show some great cancer cases, I just want to summarize my points. Cement delivery relieves pain, we know that. And it probably further helps stop further fractures. That's like Vertos 2 actually showed that in a prospective trial, that you'll stop the um, fracture from getting worse. And maybe with pathological fractures, will prevent spinal cord compression. So targeting the lesion that I showed you, I think is a very valuable tool to use. Controlled delivery of cement clearly makes it easier to do and using thicker cements. But most importantly, understand what you're trying to do in each case individually. So I think it really makes for a much, pleasant, much more pleasant experience as you can see here in Hawaii.